The topic of this talk is traceable PRFs, full collision resistance, and active security. This is joint work with David Wu. The primary goal of traceable cryptography is to prevent unauthorized distribution of software. And this is done by preventing unauthorized redistribution of cryptographic functionality. functionalities. Typically, in such a scheme, we want to embed a mark within cryptographic objects. And this can come in various forms. For example, decryption keys in an encryption scheme, signing keys in a signature scheme, and so on and so forth. There is a pirate device which is attempting replication of the underlying functionality. And the security requirement is the following. If such a successful replication is achieved, then we should be also able to successfully trace back to the set of corrupt identities that were used to build this device. The notion of traceable pseudo random functions was introduced by Goel et al. in a very recent work in 2021. Informally, it says that if there is a program C that can distinguish from a pseudo random function from a random function on randomly sampled inputs, then marked identities used to build the device should be traceable, used to build the pirate device as we just saw. So more formally or more generally, this is the diagram. So suppose an adversary is given the marked version of a PRF, then it outputs a program C, which we call the distinguisher, and it can see arbitrarily many input-output pairs. We say that the distinguisher C is good if given input-output behavior of a pseudo-random function and a random function, C should be able to tell these two distributions apart. So in essence, it should be able to break the pseudo security of the pseudo-random function. However, Goel et al. discussed in their work that this notion is not in general sufficient. For example, if the distinguisher C has hardwired in it the tuple X star comma PRFK comma X star, then this notion does not make sense because it can always break the security of the pseudo-random function game. So they relax this notion to say that C should be able to differentiate between input-output pairs of those evaluations from a pseudo-random function and that from a random function on randomly sampled inputs of the domain, which they called weak pseudo-randomness. So the tracing security informally means that the distinguisher C, if can break weak pseudo-randomness of the underlying traceable PRF, then the marked identities used to construct the PRF should be traceable. The syntax of a traceable PRF consists of the following four algorithms. First is the setup algorithm, which samples a master secret key and a tracing key. The tracing key can be public or secret. Then comes the key generation algorithm, which embeds an identity into the key. So it takes as input an identity ID and uses the master secret key to come up with this marked key SKID. The eval algorithm plays the evaluation of the PRF, the pseudo-random function. And finally, we have the trace algorithm, which is given Oracle access to a weak PRF distinguisher. With this access, the trace algorithm should be able to output a, an identity or a set of identities T. The requirements for a traceable PRF as introduced in that work also involve the following correctness, which basically catches the essence of functionality preserving. It says that the marked and unmarked keys agree almost everywhere. So the eval MSKX and eval SKID comma X should indeed match everywhere, almost everywhere. And of course we need the notion of pseudo randomness, which means that the eval algorithm is actually a pseudo random function. The tracing security, as I already mentioned previously, means that if the adversary is able to produce a useful distinguisher D, which can differentiate between the input output behavior of, a, of the pseudo random function from the 
a truly random function on randomly sampled inputs. That means it can break the security of the, the weak uh, security of the weak pseudo randomness. It can break weak pseudo randomness. Then the identities that were used to make construct D should be traceable, at least one of them. So here is the game. The adversary queries to the challenger an identity ID to which the challenger responds a marked key. And finally, the adversary returns a distinguished D, outputs a distinguished D. And the security property precisely states that if D breaks weak pseudo randomness of the eval algorithm with non negligible advantage epsilon, then the tracing algorithm should output identity with probability which is as close to as possible to epsilon. This is the single key setup which means that the adversary is querying to the challenger on only one identity. So natural next case is what happens if the adversary queries multiple times. That brings us to the idea of collusion resistance. We say that a traceable PRF or in general any such scheme is a full, fully collusion resistant if security holds against adversaries that can obtain any unbounded polynomial number of keys. So the diagram is still the same. The major change is here. The adversary is querying multiple times and these queries can be adaptive as well. And for every such query, the challenger responds with the corresponding mark key. Finally, the adversary outputs a distinguisher D if D breaks weak pseudo randomness of eval with advantage non negligible epsilon, then the tracing algorithm should output at least one of the IDJs. So, while it might seem more natural to require that the tracing algorithm should output all the identities which were queried by the adversary, this requirement is in general not possible because the adversary may choose to construct D depending only on the response to the first query and ignores all the rest of it. So as long as we are able to trace at least one of the identities, the tracing security should be good. This is a reasonable expectation to have. So Coel et al. in their work proved the following. Assuming LWE, they proved that there exists a single key traceable PRF. Further, assuming indistinguishability obfuscation and injective one-way function, they showed the existence of a fully collusion-resistant traceable PRF. I should mention here that the construction they have from standard lattice assumptions, the single key traceable PRF construction is completely insecure if the adversary obtains even just two marked keys. In fact, what happens is that the adversary can recover the PRF secret key from any two marked keys. Thus, the natural question which motivates this work is, can we obtain a fully collusion resistant traceable PRF without going through obfuscation? Such a construction would have the advantage of being plausibly post-quantum secure and also will provide a more direct instantiation than going through the full power of indistinguishability obfuscation. This led us to our work, as I said, and this is the topic of this talk. We proved this theorem that from LWE, we construct a fully collision resistant traceable PRF. So <clears throat> we provide an algorithm to how to generically augment a single key traceable PRF to a fully collision resistant traceable PRF. And our identity space is polynomial. As I said, collision resistance is actually meaningful and non-trivial to achieve, even when the identity space is polynomial. Because as I mentioned, the existing construction of a single key traceable PRF is completely insecure even in the presence of two identities queried by the adversary. So polynomial identity space is a reasonable start. And here is a very quick overview. I will elaborate on this very soon. So what we do is we combine a single key traceable PRF with a collision resistant fingerprinting code. 
Essentially, single key security of the traceable PRF binds the adversary to strategies that conform to the restrictions of the fingerprinting code model. This, in turn, yields a fully collision-resistant traceable PRF. So before we move on, we need to review what a collision-resistant fingerprinting code is, and that brings us to this slide. So fingerprinting codes are information-theoretic objects. The syntax consists of two algorithms. First, the gen algorithm, which samples a codebook gamma and a tracing key, TK. The code words in the codebook gamma are L tuples. Zero, they belong to 0, 0,1 power L, and this L is called the length of the fingerprinting code or the code length. There is also the trace algorithm, which takes as input the tracing key and a word W star and outputs an S, which should be a subset of the identity space. For the purposes of this work, we can consider this to be our identity space. We also require the notion of feasibility to better understand the security of the fingerprinting code. So it goes as follows. Suppose we are given a subset W of gamma. Our, the gamma is the code book, remember. So a word W star is feasible for the set W. It is often denoted by the notation F of W, capital F of W. If every bit in W star agrees with the corresponding bit in one of the code words in W. So there should exist at least one code word in W. So that if you look at W star one, one of the code words has the same bit in the first position. So for example, if W is this set, which consists of two elements, zero, 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 and one, 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 then the feasible set consists of zero, one power cube. Because if you if we choose any element from this set, zero, one cube, each of the bits can be matched up with one of the bits in these words. Next, we talk about collision resistant codes and the idea is exactly similar to what we have done so far, seen so far. We say a fingerprinting code is fully collision resistant. If tracing security holds against adversaries that can obtain any unbounded polynomial number of code words and the adversary can make adaptive queries. So it's the same diagram as before, the adversary makes queries, identity queries, which can be adaptive to the challenger and the challenger keeps responding with the corresponding code words. This constitutes the set W of code words obtained by the adversary. Finally, the adversary outputs a word W star. And as one can guess, the security requirement should be as follows. If W star is feasible for the set W, which is acquired by the adversary through its queries, then the tracing algorithm should at least output one of the identities which was queried by the adversary. So this brings us to the construction of the collision resistant traceable PRF. So as I've already mentioned, the primary ingredients are number one, a single key traceable PRF, which is guaranteed by Goel et al's work. So there were the domain range and identity space are suitably chosen so that we can, the entire construction is compatible with each other, each of its uh, functioning parts. And the second part is a collision resistant fingerprinting code with N code words, WI and code length L, where WI belongs to zero one power L. So the primary idea that we use in this construction is the following, take, L independent copies of the traceable PRF and just XOR them. And what do we use? Why do we need these L independent copies? We use each of these copies to embed a single bit of the code word. So we take the identity, map it to its code word, then look at the bits, then embed that bit using the ith copy of the PRF. And that is how the construction goes. And finally, XOR all of these together. Uh, so the eval algorithm goes as follows. I'm sorry, I should not have said XOR all of these together. We output all those mark keys as a tuple as we see here. So the construction goes as follows. 
the eval algorithm is on input x, we just XOR PRF ki comma x. So XORs of PRFs are secured. It is well known that this is XORs are secure as long as one of the underlying PRFs is secure. That is the main idea behind this construction. The marking scheme goes as follows. The first step is we take an identity, we map it to the corresponding code word. Then we look at the bits. Then we use the corresponding PRFs to embed those bits and obtain these marked keys. And finally, we output SK1 to SKL as a tuple. The tracing algorithm, which one can probably guess by now, is that the distinguisher D, if you're given for a distinct for the entire PRF, we construct we util, using that, we construct it a uh, distinguisher DI for each of the components, PRF KI. Then we run the trace algorithm for each of these to obtain these sets, TI. Finally, using this whatever output we have here, we construct the word W star and feed it to the tracing algorithm of the underlying fingerprinting code. So a limitation of our construction is that the marked keys key IDs are long. As you can see, the PRF keys, K is a tuple of L independent keys, K1 to KL, and also the marked keys are SK1 to SKL. So the marked keys are quite long. So this is one of the limitations. So let me briefly talk about why this is secure. Notice that if this W star, which we construct here, W bar star, if this is feasible, then we can resort to the security of the underlying fingerprinting code now. So all we need to guarantee is that the underlying word should be feasible. But now note that feasibility here means that if all of the code words corresponding to identities which are requ requested by the adversary have the same bit in a particular position, say at I0, the position I0, all of the bits have the same uh, bit, then the corresponding bit in this constructed word W bar star must also match. But notice that in this case, because the bits are the same, the adversary actually receives only one mark key, marked version. So now we can resort to the security of the underlying single key security of the underlying traceable PRF. That is, if there is a key associated with a single value, then single key security guarantees that the adversary cannot change that bit. Thus, we are guaranteed to make that the word W star is feasible. And once we have that, collusion resistance of the fingerprinting code ensures security for us. So recapping the construction again, the eval algorithm goes as follows. We take L independent copies of the traceable single key traceable PRF and we XOR them. And the marking algorithm is we take an identity, map it to the code word, look at the corresponding bits, then use each of these PRFs to embed those bits and output the tuple as a whole for the marked key. The tracing algorithm goes as follows. We have a distinguisher D. We construct, using that, we construct a distinguisher DI for each of these components. We run the trace algorithm, get a set DI, suitably construct W star, and feed it to the tracing algorithm of the underlying fingerprinting code. We should also mention that in the paper, we actually provide a statistical test to check whether this, this how this distinguisher is effi the efficient or not. We actually provide a statistical test to check the efficacy that is needed in the security proof also. So we also do this additional work in this paper. We consider the notion of active security. We additionally allow the adversary to make queries to the tracing oracle. This is an intermediate security notion. I use the word intermediate because it's intermediate between secret tracing and public tracing. So such an intermediate notion was previously also considered in the setting of watermarkable PRFs. And we were able to show using the same idea that using LWE, there exists a fully collision resistant traceable PRF with active security against adversaries making up to Q tracing queries 
for any a priori bounded polynomial q, which is q of lambda, lambda is the security parameter here. As I mentioned, the same construction can be used as before the XORing idea. The major difference is we just have to use a fingerprinting code, which is fully collision resistant against adversaries making Q tracing queries. So luckily for us, such codes were shown to exist very recently by Yang et al in their work in 2020. And we leveraged that in this construction to get the notion of active security with fully collision resistance of traceable PRFs. It is well known that PRFs can be used to construct authenticated encryption schemes, example via the encrypt then MAC paradigm. Not surprisingly, instantiating the encryption scheme with a traceable PRF and composing with an arbitrary MAC directly yields a traitor tracing scheme where the underlying encryption scheme is an authenticated encryption and hence trivially satisfies CCA security. Moreover, if the underlying traceable PRF is secure against Q-bounded active adversaries, then the resulting traitor tracing scheme is also secure against Q-bounded active adversaries. As I said, we just have to instantiate the PRF with a traceable PRF with active security. So this is one of the very important properties of traceable PRF, which was also pointed out in the works of Goel et al. That whenever we have an application which is built from a PRF, we can get a corresponding traceable version of that application by replacing the PRF with a traceable PRF. And secret key data tracing is simply an application of that. So let me summarize whatever we have discussed in this talk so far. We provide the first fully collision resistant traceable PRF from standard lattice assumptions. And we do this through the usage of fully collision resistant fingerprinting codes. We generically, generically augment of such a fully collision resistant traceable PRF using two primary ingredients. One is a single key traceable PRF. And number two is the fully collision resistant fingerprinting codes. We also showed, as we discussed, that tracing security holds even against active adversaries that have Oracle access to the tracing algorithm. So I would like to end with two questions, one of which I have already mentioned that one of the drawbacks of our construction is that the sizes of the marked keys is long. It's SK1 to SKL, where L is the code length. Can they be decreased efficiently? And number two is the active security result that we had, which dependent on Q. It had a polynomial bound Q on the number of tracing queries. This bound is appearing only because of the uh, corresponding property of the fingerprinting underlying fingerprinting code. That is, the fingerprinting code has the same bound on the tracing number of tracing queries. If that restriction can be lifted from the fingerprinting code, the same can be done for the traceable PRF as well. So the natural question is, can we construct such codes? Thank you very much. <laughs>